how do I know I'm healing? I just had a panic attack. Oh my God, I didn't sleep yesterday. Oh, I still have anxiety. I'm still having these thoughts. I still need my medication. How do I know I'm healing? I'm doing all the work. And I always say frequency, duration, and intensity. Healing doesn't mean that whatever we're trying to heal from doesn't happen. Usually it always comes back to the day we die. It comes back. Welcome to Hope to Recharge podcast. Thank you for joining me here again today. Every week we meet here to break the stigma around mental health and to bring you insight and inspiration and lots of practical tips from personal stories or professionals around the world that share how they turn their journey of mental health into healing or to thriving. Together we will break the stigma one story at a time. In mental health, together is always better. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm your host, Matana. Let's get started. This episode of the Hope to Recharge podcast is sponsored by Maxifies.com. Maxifies offers doctor-formulated, lab-certified, high-quality CBD oils and tinctures in three different formulas that provide relief from anxiety and stress, muscle relaxation, and a sleep aid to help get a better night's sleep in 1,500 milligram size bottles, 500 milligrams, and travel size bottle of 266 milligrams. Check out Maxifies.com, that's M-A-X-I-F-Y-Z.com, and use coupon code HOPE to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. That's Maxifies.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Hope to Recharge podcast. I decided I wanted to do a solo episode because I had a lot on my mind and I wanted to share. And things that I speak about often, if you know me well, you know that I speak about this. I always say our energy every day is different. So the way we speak about something can be in a different frequency and different vibration in the day that we speak about it. So if I speak about the same things tomorrow... It might be different in terms of my delivery. I want to speak about the permission to being human, what Tal Ben Shahar, my mentor, teaches and one of the biggest gifts that he gave me to understand, the permission of being human. I just finished the first year of Happiness Study Academy by Tal Ben Shahar. People from all over the world join this academy of learning and understanding happiness. It's fascinating. I'm in my second year, just started my second year and The more I learn, the more I understand how much I don't know about happiness and how much there's to understand and learn and philosophy and to learn from others that practice it or that learned it in depth. And I'm so grateful that I have Tal Ben Shahar as my mentor and get to really deep dive into the biggest pursuit of most human beings in the world is happiness. We pursue so many things in the name of happiness, but the real goal of humanity is to be happy. We want to be happy. If someone told you, you wake up in the morning and you'll be happy every day and you don't have to pursue anything, you're going to say, sure, I'll take that because humans want to be happy. Now, humans have ups and downs and all around. And one of the greatest things, as I said, that Tal teaches is the permission to be human, to feel it all. The anger, the regret, the frustration, the love, the connection, the yearning, all the different emotions. We need to be in them. We can't bypass any emotion. The only way through an only way to overcome an emotion is through it. The only way to get out of an emotion is through it. We can't bypass it. When we understand that we're human and that part of feeling it all is part of living and being, then we give ourselves permission to be in those emotions. The thing is that a lot of people and most humans don't like being in negative emotions because it's painful. Positive psychology teaches us how to deal and how to walk through it in a healthy manner that it helps us and it serves us and we grow from it or find meaning from it or we try to elevate it to get to joy to happiness to moments of meaning when we learn about positive psychology and the pursuit of happiness and understanding what it takes in order to be happy. One of the things that I learned and every single book in the world that talks about happiness, any book of success, any book of goals and achieving goals talks about gratitude. And if you are not 
new to Hope to Recharge You, that gratitude is my oxygen. Gratitude is what I started my journey off with. My journey to recovery started with understanding gratitude and implementing gratitude and living and breathing gratitude, not because I'm a holy person, but because it's the greatest, greatest investment in yourself. When you live with gratitude, you suddenly notice how much more you have. You notice how much more you have to be grateful for. You attract so much more joy and happiness and good to your life. It's just, it's the power of gratitude. The gratitude effect is the strongest effect in the world, just hands down. It's the closest feeling to love. So my question today is, when we yearn for something, when we're in desperation, when we really want something, if it's to heal from something, if it's to try to achieve something, if it's looking for a new job, for a partner, for a relationship, if we want to conceive and we're having a hard time conceiving, if we want financial success and we're having a hard time with financial success, if we want a relationship with somebody that is a hard relationship to have, if whatever we are yearning for, if it's physical health from a a disease or from an illness, if it's mental health, whatever you're yearning for, whatever it is, if it's sleeping more, if it's losing weight, whatever it is, we yearn for it. The more we yearn for it, the more it consumes our mind, our day-to-day, the way we show up. And there is a strong pull. We pray for it. We meditate for it. We write about it. We learn about it. We take courses. We buy books. We go into worry. We go into anxiety. We go into fear. We go into sadness. It consumes us when we want something. Do you sometimes feel stuck? Do you wish you can be somewhere else? Do you have a vision of where you want to get to, but you just don't know what the first step to take in order to get to that life that you're dreaming of? How did I shift from deep depression, from extreme anxiety to a thriving life, to a productive life, to a life full of joy? I put many things into practice and it's every single day. Many of you know that it's gratitude, a healthy mindset, boundaries, self-love, and one of the most important things that many people don't speak about self-forgiveness and forgiveness to others essential for healing if you want to work one-on-one with me on these topics in order to move forward towards that dream life that you have a vision of click the link below in the show notes it's a custom made program for you one-on-one with me we will develop a concrete program that you can implement in your life so you can create a better well-being click the link below looking forward to working with you So let's say we're yearning for something for a few years. And the more we yearn for it, the more we want it, the more we want it. And then we get it. Does our gratitude match the intensity of our yearning? So the first few days, the first few moments, the first few weeks, probably the gratitude will be high, very high. The emotions, the joy, the satisfaction. But then when we get used to what we got, human nature is to forget the emotion, that feeling of what it was like not to have it and how much we wanted it and to go less on the gratitude. Everything in life is frequency, duration, and intensity. I often tell my clients when they say, how do I know I'm healing? I just had a panic attack. Oh my God, I didn't sleep yesterday. Oh, I still have anxiety. I'm still having these thoughts. I still need my medication. How do I know I'm healing? I'm doing all the work. And I always say frequency, duration, and intensity. Healing doesn't mean that whatever we're trying to heal from doesn't happen. Usually it it always comes back to the day we die. It comes back. The question is, how frequently does it come back? How intense is it when it happens? And the duration, how long does it last? So does our sadness, how, how often does it come? How intense does it feel? And how long does it last? Frequency, duration, and intensity. That's a measure. And I often tell my clients, keep a diary and measure it and say, okay, when was the last time I felt this way? How often did it come? How intense do I feel it now? Write it down. Write it with words, write it with numbers, give it a feeling. How long did it last? Is it a night? Was it a day? Was it a week? Was it a few minutes? When you keep this log of frequency, duration, and intensity, you will start seeing a pattern of recovery. 
If you show up properly and do your neuroplasticity work and your boundaries and you're working on forgiveness in the proper way and you're working on your gratitude and you're working on the what you put in your mind, what you put in your body, exercise, all that, you're going to start seeing a shift. Now, the shift won't be from zero to 100. It's going to be slow. The question is, reflect back and see frequency, duration, and intensity. Now, I want to say the same about gratitude. When we are grateful for something that we yearned for and we begged for and we prayed for and we attracted to us and we got it, how frequent and how intense and how long does it last? Human nature will be that it will go less. In order to be in the vibration of gratitude, we need to increase the frequency, increase the duration, and increase the intensity of gratitude, the practice of gratitude. The more we practice, the more we're going to feel, the more we're going to see results, the more we're going to want to do it, the more we're going to attract frequency, duration, and intensity. If our frequency and duration and intensity of our yearning for something, our begging, our praying, our anxiety about it, whatever we wanted was a certain way before we got it, Make sure to match a frequency, duration, and intensity for the gratitude just as much as the anxiety came, just as much as the panic attacks came for wanting what we wanted, just as much as our prayers. If you prayed for it three times, 10 times a day, and you kept on mumbling under your breath, oh God, I want this, or you were mindful and you visualized it coming, make sure your gratitude is just as intense, if not more. Now do it because it's the best way in investing in your self-care. It is self-love and self-care. I say, eventually we get to gratitude being a spiritual practice. But for now, do it as medication. For now, do it as a way of connecting to yourself and giving to yourself and nurturing yourself. It is like drinking diamonds of crystal positive energy going through your body and giving it out to the people you love around you. It is just that powerful. Why is it that there's so many books on gratitude and healing? So many books on gratitude and healing, gratitude and achieving goals, gratitude and better relationships, gratitude and health. Why? Because it works. Because there's not enough literature out there to say, grab it, do it, start practicing it, practice what you're not good at. The more you practice, the better you're going to be at it. So why not take something that is free? It's out there. It's available to anyone. There's a ton of literature. There's a ton of YouTubes on it. There's a ton of evidence. There is research. Go lean on the research and infuse yourself with the practice of gratitude. Elevate the frequency, the intensity, and duration of your gratitude especially for things that you were yearning for and you spent a tremendous amount of time, money, energy to achieve whatever you were yearning for. Make sure that gratitude is just as intense. And remember permission to be human. Just because you felt upset about something, just because you're feeling lonely or sad or angry or resentment, doesn't mean that a minute later, If that feeling leaves and do not suppress the emotion, be in the emotion, the only way out of an emotion is through. So be in it and don't put yourself down for having emotions that do not feel good. Say, this is me being human. This is me being alive. I am grateful to have these feelings and I hope they are going to pass. What are they there to teach me? What is it here to tell me? What do I need at this moment? And when it goes away, When that feeling leaves, go into gratitude, go into peace, go into love. Attract that good. Attract it. Utilize the time, the positive time, to increase your positive vibration. Unfortunately, humankind has this way of forgetting the bad, the ugly, the hard times, and just floating. Once we are feeling good, so we don't take our vitamins as much, and we don't um, exercise as much, and we don't stay on the bike. As Jesse Itzler, my mentor, says, get back on the bike, get back on the bike, don't get off the bike. If you're doing well, keep that high vibration going. Keep those 
positive affirmation. Keep those positive habits. Do the exercise, the mind exercise, even when you're feeling good. Because you know what happens? You know what people ask me all the time? How do you stay so healthy mind? And I'm like, I don't. I fall a lot, but I make sure to never go a day, never go a day without doing what I did when I was desperate. When I was desperate, I was doing my meditation, my prayer, my positive thinking, reading all the books around the world that has to do with neuroplasticity, putting myself, emerging myself, submerging myself in the education that will help me learn more about my brain. So once I got better, I didn't say, okay, now I'm better, I'm done. No, I made it more intense. There is no day without work. If we take a day without work, now just being is also work, by the way. I take days that I'm just going to be, and that's work also. For me, that's a tremendous amount of work. But never say I'm good enough, I don't have to do my gratitude. I'm good enough, I don't have to work on my boundaries. I'm good enough, I don't have to work on forgiveness. I'm good enough, I don't have to work on exercise. I'm good enough, I don't have to meditate. I don't have to pray. There's no such thing as good enough. We're a work in progress to the day we die. We keep on working on ourselves. And if we don't, we will regress. And now permission to be human, what Tab and Shahar talks about is seeing all the different kinds of emotions that come through us and we're never perfect. That is the permission to be human, to say, you know what? I achieved a goal. For me, I achieved a goal to get off of my medication many years ago, eight and a half years ago, maybe even nine years ago. I got off all my medication. I was determined to get off. Do I know for certain that I'll never get back on them, that I'll never need them? Absolutely not. There is no guarantee. There is no way I will know forever if I won't need medication. I thank God every single day that I don't need medication. I thank him from the bottom of my heart that my brain is functioning without medication. Now, I keep that high vibration of gratitude for not needing medication going. And I don't forget about the days that I couldn't swallow and I couldn't eat and I couldn't get up and I couldn't walk. It's part of my daily gratitude to remember those days, just like when we say on Passover and every day when we bench that we remember the days that we left Egypt. We have to remember when we left our personal Egypt, our personal horror story of what we were able to get out of and remember it every single day that we don't forget. And that remembering is a practice for us to be on top of our healing and not regress and continue working to get to our better self every day to improve a little bit. And when we get off the bike, we forget where we came from, we forget what we're going to, and then we regress. I had someone call me last week and said to me, I don't understand. I was doing so well. I didn't have a panic attack in four years. She had panic attacks for many years and she didn't understand why they came back. I said, what were you doing the past four years for your mental health? She's like, well, I did exercise. I was working on boundaries and things that I wanted to do. I said, did you do everything else that you were doing when you were trying to get better? And she's like, no, I felt that was better. So I didn't have to do it. I said, that's what happens. When we don't show up every single day to do the work, we have a chance of regressing. So we can't go into our comfort zone and say, okay, we're good. We no longer have to work. Frequency, duration, and intensity on our neuroplasticity, on our habits, on our positive mindset, our positive psychology needs to go up when we're feeling good, not down. We have to put more weight when you're learning how to pick up weights, when you're getting to the comfort zone and it's no longer hard to pick up 20 pounds. And then it's, it feels easy and we can lift the weights 20 times. So we put another two pounds, 22 pounds of weights that we're going to lift and then 25 pounds. We don't stay in the comfort zone because then that means the body's not working. The same thing with our mind. We keep on adding more and adding more. When we feel like we can't lift anymore, so take one bar down. Take a bar down. If you think it's too much and you're doing nothing because of it, take a bar down. Do less. But if you're feeling very easy with the mental exercise that you're doing in order to keep yourself healthy, put more bars on, set more boundaries, give yourself more time to be, to think, to be grateful, to enjoy the life that you requested and you got. Don't let go of it.
Is there something that's preventing you from achieving your goals or interfering with your happiness? Maybe it's anxiety or stress. BetterHelp.com will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line and it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online with a broad range of expertise available depending on what you need and the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send messages to your counselor. BetterHelp.com is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change your counselors if you need to, and it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp.com wants you to start living a happier life today, so visit BetterHelp.com slash hope to recharge. That's BetterHelp.com slash hope to recharge and join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. You'll also get 10% off your first month. Once again, that's BetterHelp.com slash hope to recharge. So my message is just like your frequency, duration, and intensity when you were desperate for something, it consumed you. It consumed you. Make sure that your frequency, duration, and intensity of gratitude, of positive thinking, of showing up in a positive manner in this world and your life matches the intensity and the frequency and the long-lasting of the desperation, of the yearning, of the pain, of the sadness. They should match. They should at least match. And if it was for five years, it should be at least five years of joy and happiness and gratitude and more. And it's just going to bring more and more good. It just is. It's the gratitude effect. So I ask you, where is one thing in your life that you feel that you were gifted something that you asked for and you got it? What is one thing that you can elevate the gratitude on that specific thing that you received as a gift? And just focus on that. Just focus on that. You're going to see when you get good at it, it's going to be a craving. I crave gratitude now. I crave it because it's just my oxytocin. It's my excitement. It just gives me so much joy. So I gravitate to it when I feel a little low. And if the low is supposed to teach me something, I stay there. But I could still be grateful at the same time. Sometimes in order to get through something hard, we can bring some gratitude in it in order to get through it in the healthiest way, not in order to suppress it, but to help us navigate through the pain. What is something you want to be more grateful for? What is something that you yearned for, you got it, and you want to up the frequency, duration, and intensity? And remember, if you feel that you're not healing, that you're not getting what you want, ask yourself how often and how frequent, how intense, And how long does it last? Whatever is not feeling right. And start keeping a little diary on it and measure it and see. And you'll see that you're coming a long way. Be kind to yourself. Be grateful to yourself. Be grateful to yourself for the hard work you're doing. Gratitude starts with us. Be grateful to yourself. Be grateful to God. If you believe in God, to the universe to people around you. Remember to be grateful for the people that support you, that help you, for the people that believe in you. Gratitude is the greatest, highest frequency of good in the world. Tap into it. Wishing you all a very happy, whatever day it is, night or whatever it is. And if you didn't have a chance to go to iTunes or to Spotify and rate us and review us, we will be so grateful to you. So grateful. That's how you can help us spread this podcast, spread this message to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. So if you can go to iTunes, take 30 seconds, say thank you, and give us a rating, give us a review, Spotify or iTunes, or just send us an email and we will read it out in one of the upcoming episodes. Thank you for being a part of Hope to Recharge and thank you for listening to me because when I speak out loud, I'm speaking to myself. The best teacher is a student. I am a student of life just like everyone else. And I am talking to myself out loud right here in my studio. And I am grateful that I have people that are willing to listen to myself talking to myself. And it gives me more enthusiasm to do the work for myself. Because as I said, there is no end to the work till 120. We are a work in progress. Bye till next time. Have a meaningful, grateful day. 
Thank you for listening till the end. We highly appreciate all of our listeners. And Mental Health Together is better. You being here means a tremendous amount to us. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like some extra boost of information and inspiration that is not on the podcast, you can go to our website, hopetorecharge.com. There's some premium content that for the cost of a cup of coffee, you can download some amazing information that will help you, a tool that will guide you through life. So don't skip a beat. Don't hesitate. Go to hopetorecharge.com and see what other offerings we have there for your mental health well-being. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you enjoyed this and you want to say thank you, the best way of gratitude will be by you leaving a review or a comment or sharing this with a loved one. There is no greater form of gratitude for us. Thank you. Bye till next time. Looking to reduce your anxiety and stress, relax your muscles, or get a better night's sleep? Check out Maxifies.com 100% legal hemp, where you can find doctor-formulated, lab-certified, high-quality CBD oils, tinctures, and other items, cultivated, grown, harvested, and packaged in the United States, and available in different sizes and strength formulas. Check out Maxifies.com, that's M-A-X-I-F-Y-Z.com, and use coupon code HOPE to get 10% off your order, plus free shipping. That's Maxifies.com.